I think a question that many of us in the Christian church are asking at the moment is what might God be asking us as his church to do differently in the future to the ways that we've done things in the past? What are the lessons that he's teaching us over this period of lockdown? Let me suggest briefly to you three possible things that I've noticed. Firstly, I think that when we worship online, it never is quite the same as when we are physically able to be together. I think only a small proportion of us actually sing along at home when we listen to sung worship being played to us over the internet. Our desire is to sing together and we're just not allowed to do that yet. But maybe God's telling us something about our need to worship him as individuals, not just now, but on into the future as well. Rather than to see our worship experience defined by our gatherings, we see it as part of our lives, integral to what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And I wonder whether we've got a bit lazy with our worship in the church. We've become far too focused on sung worship. As someone who's a musician and has been involved in facilitating sung worship for most of my adult life, I don't want that to stop completely. But I do think that we've become quite monochrome, when in fact the creation around us that God has given us is technicolour. We ought to reflect that in our worship. Where are the poets amongst us? Where are the artists? Where are the videographers? Where are those who will be able to lead us individually and corporately in acts of worship that are beyond just sung worship? And I think that God might be raising our eyes to look around us out and about. Some of us are blessed to live in beautiful parts of the world that every scene is a different beautiful view, but even those in inner cities will see the beauty of God's creation around them. Maybe God's teaching us to appreciate that more and more in these days. Even just a simple leaf, you'll see as you pick it up the individual beauty of that, something that God has created uniquely. And you will also recognise that these things are the lungs of our planet. Not only do we worship God for the beauty of what we see before us, but we recognise that this, this simple thing, is part of God's plan to give life to this whole planet. And then maybe from our worship might spring our mission. So the second thing that I think that God might be teaching us, asking us to do differently in the future, is how we engage in his mission in this world, how we reach this world with the good news about Jesus. Firstly, then, we ought to be committed to this world that we live in, this creation that God has blessed us with. Creation care is very much at the heart of God's mission in this world. For you and I, if we are involved in looking after this living, breathing planet, we are part of God's restoring plan for all things. Only he can complete that eventually, but for us, our commitment is to demonstrate what it means to be his kingdom followers. I think also, secondly, we have to recognise that God's mission is something that is tangible and practical and also local. Over lockdown, I think people have recognised that God's mission is as much their neighbours as it is these people that someone else is invited to come to the Alpha meal. Not that there's anything wrong with that necessarily. Maybe we ought to recognise far more what it means to be a living sermon that is good news for the people that are poor in our neighbourhoods, those who are oppressed and held captive in our schools, our colleges and the places that we work. What might it look like to be God's people releasing and setting free those around about us that are marginalised in our society? And we also need to recognise that when we talk about the fields being white to harvest, that that community that we're talking about these days is not just the, the, the church and those that are close to it, to it, but equally it is those that are online. Our Facebook friends are as much part of our mission field as the physical people who we mix with. We've seen that over the period of lockdown. It raises all kinds of questions for us, but we need to recognise that the fields are white onto harvest on the street that we live, but they're also white onto harvest on our Twitter feed. 
What might that look like for our witness to the good news, to the love and compassion of Jesus in this world today? And the third thing that I'd just like to suggest God might be asking us to do differently as his church in the future is to rethink and maybe redefine what we mean when we use the word community. I remember someone telling me quite recently that when their son got married, there was only one person who was going to be his best man. This was someone who he'd known since he was 10 years old, who he was exceptionally close to. On the wedding day, he met his best man physically for the third time in their lives. Their entire relationship and the depth of their relationship had been conducted online via gaming platforms. Equally, over lockdown, one of our churches in the Southwest has gone online like many have with Zoom. One of the kids that grew up in the church has now moved away to a different part of the UK, but at a point of crisis, recognised the need for spiritual support and, because of a contact still in this church, became part of their Zoom congregation. Long story short, this digital prodigal has now returned and is now an active part of the church community. A few Sundays ago, he led worship from the other side of the UK for a church that is based in Somerset. So this physical virtual community of all real people raises questions for us as the Christian church moving forwards. How will we grow deeply in relationship with those that we're not physically with so that we can challenge and encourage each other in our faith? How will we define belonging in our churches in the future? And how are we going to recognise and release the gifts of those who are part of our communities but who are not physically with us, either for our gatherings or in any other way, shape or form? These are questions that I think are new to us over this period of lockdown and questions that really deserve an answer as we move out of lockdown and into the future. I would love to know what you think about these things. What are the ways that you feel God is challenging us to change in terms of how we are his church in the future? What are the things that you think that I've mentioned that resonate or those that you disagree with? If you'd like to get in contact with me, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this as together we discern how God is leading us forward into a future that will recognise and demonstrate his kingdom just as much, if not even more, than the world that we've left behind us just three months ago. Music